ceiling in the PAC has been replaced and they gave it a coat of paint and the asbestos removal prep work sealed up the 1960s classrooms like a tomb. You can see the full footage at the conclusion of this video. This week, in keeping with football fever, I went to the line of scrimmage and called an audible. I don't normally make changes to the prescribed readings, but on Monday, in my devotional reading, I read Psalm 44 and was so taken by it that I really wanted to preach on it. And then when I saw how the scheduled reading from Isaiah 40 paired so well with it, I called a new play at the line. So this weekend, the first reading will be selected verses from Psalm 44, and the second reading will be from Isaiah 40, and then the normal gospel reading from Mark 1. So, what was so engaging from Psalm 44, you might ask? Well, you'll need to come this weekend or tune in online to find out. But let's just say for now that it's a guide through the big emotions of anger and resentment against God Himself. If you've ever been mad at God or disappointed or frustrated with Him and have wondered, what do you do with that? Then you will want to listen in. If you are interested at all, I encourage you to read Psalm 44 beforehand. For our devotion for today, I want to look at the gospel reading for this weekend's worship from Mark chapter 1, 29 to 39, and to narrow the focus down to the hands of Jesus. He has just finished teaching at the synagogue and went immediately to the house of Simon Peter. The Gospel writer Mark tells the story of Jesus in these brief little snippets, almost like a Reader's Digest version. So when he includes a particular detail, you know that it's important. And Jesus was taken to the sickbed of Simon Peter's mother-in-law. She was burning up with a high fever, and Mark records that Jesus came and took her by the hand lifted her up, and the fever left her. If you go too fast, you might miss that Jesus was not gloved, nor was He wearing scrubs or a mask. No, His bare hand took hold of her hand. Touching a sick person then and now means that you have been exposed to the illness and that you are in danger of becoming ill yourself. Touching a sick person at that time in the Jewish religion also made one religiously unclean. And this would require that Jesus follow a certain protocol that would allow him to be clean again, after all of its requirements were met. But Jesus didn't follow any protocols, medical or religious. His normal procedure with the sick, the dying, even the dead, say the dead girl, uh, the synagogue's leader, was to touch them. Yes, he could also heal with a simple command without ever seeing the person as he did the centurion's servant. But he often touched the blind eyes, put his fingers in the deaf ears, and bodily took hold of the lepers. Why? I know it's a silly question because on one level it's obvious why He touched them, and that's it's what a mother does with her crying baby. It's what a father does when his little girl is sad. It's what friends do when they grieve. They touch, they hold, they embrace. Love moves us to reach out and bring near to comfort, cleanse, and restore. That's what makes this current pandemic even more difficult, is that we can't touch, embrace, hold a hand, come near for fear of sickening others or ourselves. Touch is so necessary, so Jesus touches, and He has no fear of contamination, since at His command, the fever broke and healing was restored. He had no fear of infection, but there was a cross waiting for Him. Death would touch him. But as the fever fled from Simon Peter's mother, 
the leprosy turned to healthy skin, the blind eyes were opened, so as death touched Jesus, it too had to yield to life and health on Easter morning. And so it will be for you whom Jesus has touched in the water of baptism, with His bread and His wine, His word against your ears. By this God-given faith, we know that we will embrace Jesus one day. His hand will take ours, because that's what love does. And in the coming weeks and months, we will be able to touch and take the hand of another. He is our hope, our health, and our touch for eternal life. May the living Lord Jesus Christ bless and keep you all this week. And a quick reminder that you will need to use the North parking lot this Sunday and for many Sundays at the Tyler campus and enter through the North Portico doors for worship. And as advertised, here is the renovation progress so far at the Tyler campus. <laughs> when you see it, you'll... CSI Ascension. Yeah. <laughs> it's so cool. Oh, you're, you're taking me over to the yeah. other side. Okay. Yeah. Oh, $5 on this Open. <laughs> 